we'll stand and worship the Lord and uh, glad you are absolutely here tonight. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like a traveling home. No pain nor death can enter there. I feel like a traveling home. Yes, I feel like a traveling, traveling home. Post Town. Do you feel like traveling on? Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Just one quick announcement. This Sunday morning, we have Phelps and Banks that will be special singing with us, and it will be a privilege, and we want all to come out. If you're on the live stream, we want you to come out this Sunday morning. We're looking for a great blessing. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for what you've done, Lord, what you're doing, and what you're going to do tonight. Father, we've come expecting, Lord, to hear from you. Lord, we want to see you high and lifted up tonight. Lord, we want to worship you, Father. We want to praise you, Father. We want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us, Lord. We thank you most of all to be saved, Father. We thank you, Lord, for a church family, Father. Oh, that's even nearer and dearer sometimes or than our own family, Lord. And brothers and sisters in Christ, Father, that'll come together, that'll lift you up, Lord. That'll worship you, Lord. What a glory and a privilege and an honor, Lord, it is to be in the family of God. Lord, we pray you come down, Lord, and just sweep across this place tonight, Lord. Your Holy Spirit to move with power, Lord. Do what only you can do, Father. We've come, Lord, with our cups turned up, Lord, ready to receive, Lord, what you have for us, Father. Speak to those even over the live stream, Father, wherever they may be, Lord. We pray and encourage those that may be down tonight. Lord, save the unsaved, Lord. Sanctify our believers, Lord. We pray, restore, Lord, those that are where not they need to be, Father. And we pray 
you to have your blessed way tonight. Lord, we pray, Lord, your spirit, Lord, to do what only it can do, Father. Have freedom, Lord. Give him liberty, Father, to preach your word tonight, Father, that it may fall on that good soul. Bring forth much fruit. And Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Lord. In Jesus' name, have your blessed way. Amen.
praise the Lord. Looking forward to that day. I just have a few quick announcements. Uh, just a reminder that next Wednesday night we will be having revival prayer meeting at 6. Also, there's a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center for the upcoming church dinner, which is December the 10th. Also at the Welcome Center, there are two cards for Cora Drake. So if you could sign that after service, one of those, and uh, Troy and Pauletta are going to take that to Sister Cora. Um, but as we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, we do have several on our prayer concerns list. We do want to continue to pray for Tom Shepard. His surgery went well, but he is still in a lot of pain, so we want to pray for Tom. Also, we want to continue for Barb's niece, uh, Debbie Gwynn. We thank the Lord for the good report there, but let's continue to lift her up to the Lord. Also, I got a message. Um, Patty Thorpe's sister, Betty, had a mass on her lung, and she was supposed to have a biopsy today, and they couldn't do that. Her heart went to AFib, so I told Patty that we would be praying for her. Also, we want to continue to pray for Sue Edwards, and um, we want to just pray for all those that need a healing touch from the Lord tonight. Perhaps you have a, a spoken prayer request tonight. Yes, Terry? Uh, remember Brother and Sister Ashley. They're, he's the pastor at Mayfield. Their home caught on fire yesterday. Oh, yeah. and, um, they lost their garage, their family room. And their entire house was filled with black smoke, so they had to vacate the premises. And uh, they're having to find other means uh, to live at for right now. Wow. So they were supposed to talk to adjusters and stuff today, but everybody got out safely. Thank the Lord. Pets. Yeah. We lost both of them, so just remember them in prayer. Let's pray for the Ashleys, yes. Did someone else have a spoken tonight? Unsaved loved ones tonight. I know we all have those. Unspoken requests by an upraised hand. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Randy if he could make his way up here and lead us. As many as would well like to come and bring these requests to the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this Wednesday night. It's good to be able to come and, and worship together, but it's good to come and, and spend some time in prayer. So let's all stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. What a beautiful day the Lord has given. Precious Lord and Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, so much for this day that you have given us, Lord. God, we'd, we'd ask today, Lord, that you just remember each and every one of the requests, God, that's been given. Lord, the family that's had the fire, Lord, we'd ask, God, that you'd just comfort them tonight, Lord God. We'd ask, Lord, that you would take care of every situation that's been brought before you, Lord. We'd ask, Lord, that you'd lead, guide, and direct each and every one of us that's in this church tonight, Lord God. If there'd be one, Lord, here tonight, within the sound of my voice, Lord, that doesn't know you, I would pray, God, that this would be the time, the hour, and the day that they could give their heart to you. God, we know that we're nothing, Lord, without you. Everything that we do, God, depends upon you. Talking to my cousin today, Lord, that's lost the baby. God, I'd ask you to, to remember Andrea tonight. Lord God, lift her up. I, I haven't the words to say, Lord God, for someone that's lost a child. Lord, but you know because you give your son. God, and what a, what a blessing that is for me that you have given your son so that I can be free of the sins of the world, Lord. God, I thank you for each and everything that you do for me and my family. God, I thank you for each and everything that you're doing for our church. God, continue to build the church. Continue, Lord God. We, we thank you, Lord, so much for the music directors that you've sent us, Lord. God, we thank you for each and everything that you do for us, Lord. God, I'd ask that you just keep leading, guiding, and directing each and every one of us, Lord. And everything that I've asked tonight, Lord God, I'd ask in the precious name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for each and everything that you do for us. In your name we pray. Amen.
is it? I think it's on. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Pray for me. The devil's been fighting me all day to get uh, to come and get up here. So, yeah, pray for me, please.
Oh, man. Okay. Let me catch my. <laughs> I gotta think. I didn't bring my book. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna go for it. I've always had a place to sleep, clothes to wear, and food to eat. God has been so good to me. I thank you, Lord, for mom and dad, the best friend.
Genesis chapter 11 tonight, if you have your Bibles. As we stand together to, this evening to open God's Word, Genesis the 11th chapter. We'll begin in verse 1. The Bible records, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Bible says in verse 5, The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Verse 9, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. I don't know if you've ever read that. I'm sure many of you have. But I don't know if you've ever heard a message on spiritual Babylon. And tonight I want to preach to you this message God laid upon my heart. And it's called Building the Tower of Babel in the Church. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would feed your flock, bless your word, multiply it, and God build your church. We thank you, Lord, for a Wednesday night service where we can come in and worship in spirit and in truth. Thankful God tonight to know that our names are in the book of life. We've been saved, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. It's to you that we give all our glory to tonight. It's to you that we sing, it's to you that we worship, it's to you that we even preach the Word of God. Father, that all we do, we do for the glory of God. Have your way tonight, we pray. Put a rebuke upon Satan. We thank you now in Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. You know, we see here in the early chapters of Genesis, the progression of of man, not only the progression of man, but the expansion of nations and families and generations since Adam. But we particularly pick up here in Genesis 11 chapter where man has progressed beyond just brick and mortar and slime for mortar. But man has progressed into building a city and a tower. And man has progressed to building something to reach unto heaven as the Bible tells us. The motivation behind wanting to reach heaven is, I believe, summed up in those words that we read there in Genesis 11, chapter, verse 4, where it says, They said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. But notice these words, Let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. I think the key there. And the motivation behind them wanting to reach heaven is, is summed up in those words, let us make a name. In other words, that we might be well known. That we may make a name for ourselves. One commentator well writes, they were moved with such pride and ambition that they preferred their own glory instead of God's. So first we see, what does the Tower of Babel represent? 
What does the Tower of Babel represent? This Tower of Babel, number one, represents man's attempt to make a name for himself and take all the glory for it. That's what it represents, that man would make a name for himself and take all the glory for it. Surely we see this today, not just in the world, but we see it in the church. Men and women trying, attempting to build and promote and advance their cause, elevate and exalt self. Self likes to be lifted up. Self likes to be known. Self likes to get glory. You see, the Tower of Babel here is a sad reminder of the shrine of self, the American Idol. Look at me, the trophy room of self. So the Tower of Babel represents the attempt for man here to build for himself and to take all the glory of it. And so that brings us to the second part, what the Tower of Babel represents. This Tower of Babel represents man's attempt to steal the glory of God. Man's attempt to steal the glory of God. Now hear me tonight. It is a sin to try to steal God's glory. It is the sin of pride. Hear what the Lord says about stealing his glory. In 1 Corinthians 1.29, he simply says that no flesh should glory in his presence. In verse 31, he says that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Or over in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 17, he says, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Yet we have today in many churches men manipulated by Satan to elevate themselves above God. Men want to be worshipped. Men and women want to be noticed. Whether it be by human learning or man's ingenuity or, or birthright or respectability or having money power in the church, I want to tell you, men and women do their utmost to usurp and appropriate the church of God and to elevate themselves up into God's position. When men and women think, think they're more suitable to run the church than God the Holy Ghost, they build the Tower of Babel. When the word and spirit are usurped by the wisdom of men and worshiping of self, listen, that's when the Tower of Babel is beginning to be erected. Many of the great and popular churches today have grieved the spirit. How? By trying to build a name for themselves. Well, let's just rebrand. Listen, we don't need to rebrand anything. We're not building a brand. We don't need to slick down the gospel. Listen, the devil has made a grease plank that many are sliding on in false comfort and a false gospel. The Tower of Babel represents man elevating himself to God. The Tower of Babel represents man's pride on display. Here again what God says in 1 Corinthians 1 27, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to not things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. Now I thank God tonight that he can use the weak. He can use the despised. I thank God that he can use nobodies. That we can tell everybody about that somebody named Jesus. The true church of God, my friend, builds upon one name. If we're going to brand anything, it's going to be the name of Jesus. The Tower of Babel represents man's attempt to make a name for himself and to take all the glory for it. The Tower of Babel represents man's attempt to steal the glory of God. The Tower of Babel represents man's pride on display. Second of all, what is the definition of Babel? What is the definition of Babel? Well, the very definition is found here where God defines it for us what Babel means. Look here again in verse six, it says, the Lord said, behold, the people's one, 
and they have all one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. I think the key verse there is verse 9. Because there God gives us the very definition of Babel and what Babel means. God defines Babel as the definition of God that God gives to us is to confound. Not only to confound, but to scatter. In other words, their unity was broken up. They were no longer one or of one language. They couldn't understand one another, and they were no longer of one heart, one mind, and one mouth. The reason their unity was broken up was because their unity was based upon themselves instead of God. The reason that God confounded their language is because it became about them and not God. And God defeated their purposes because their purpose had become centered upon themselves and not God. Therefore, God blessed them with confusion. Or cursed them, should we say. Some think their confusion's a blessing. And it's not. The spiritual implication of this is great. And I think it's very important to understand. That brings us to our third point. What is spiritual Babylon? What is spiritual Babylon? Spiritual Babylon is prophetically mentioned six times in the book of Revelation. And every time it's mentioned, it's not a blessing. But spiritual Babylon is under the judgment of God. Spiritual Babylon is not good. It's not a pleasant condition. The first time it's mentioned is in Revelation 14 verse 8. It says, there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So we see Babylon in Revelation prophetically, is a fallen condition, fallen spiritually. She has spread the wrath of her spiritual fornication into all the nations. You see, next we read in Revelation 17, 5, it says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of all the earth. Here we see in the eyes of God, spiritual Babylon is an abomination. And yet today we have people running into spiritual Babylon. People that turn their ears from the truth of God. People that don't worship Christ, but worship man and are part of something that's nothing more than spiritual Babylon. We read in Revelation 18, 2, and it says, He cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Hear me tonight, where we know the true church is filled with the peaceful dove, the Spirit of God. Babylon is a cage holding hateful birds. The spiritual condition, and that condition is in the heart of those that possess this experience. Spiritual Babylon is a condition where men and women elevate themselves. Confusion and strife exist, and the devil is constantly working to bring division and strife and ruin and hatred and backbiting and gossip, and there's no unity in spiritual Babylon. God lets us not only see the condition of spiritual Babylon, but God lets us see his final verdict and judgment upon spiritual Babylon. 
Revelation 18.10, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, in one hour is thy judgment come. In verse 21, And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Spiritual Babylon is man's attempt to have a church or be part of a group or denomination or a religious organization that builds their own tower to heaven. And thus rendered by God destitute and under judgment, not of the Holy Spirit of God. And God tells us that not only spiritual Babylon is under judgment, but he tells us what to do with spiritual Babylon. In verse 4, he said, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. God says, come out. Come out of Babylon. Come out of confusion. Come out of that condition. Don't be a part of her. Be a part of what Jesus can do for your life. Be part of what God wants you to be part of. Not what man wants you to be build, part of. While men build their towers and, and, and the heaven, God wants to build his church. While men and women want to elevate themselves, hear me tonight, God, he condescended. He came down from heaven to earth. Why? So that God could dwell in us and live through us. My friend, we don't have to build anything to heaven. We don't have to climb a ladder to get to heaven. There's not enough works that we can do to get to heaven. You're not good enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not religious enough. But thank God Jesus came down and he took upon himself our sinful flesh so that you and I could go to be with him forever. You see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Our wicked, sinful heart has grieved God, and yet it continues to try to build something in the church. Listen, Babylon is under the judgment of God. And God says, come out of her. Come out of her. Well, I thank God tonight. The scripture also shows us God's true church. Revelation 21, verse 2, John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He carried me away in the spirit, verse 10, to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone, most precious, like unto a jasper stone, clear as a crystal. John sees this holy city, the church, where all of her inhabitants are saved. They're walking those streets of gold, which by the way, my friend, is not literal. It is a spiritual, it is a spiritual experience where you and I live a holy life. We live a sanctified holy life, purified, tried as of gold. Her glory, what glory? It's God's glory. It ain't your glory. It ain't my glory. It's the God of glory. His light shines through his church and where his truth Truth is declared and men and women receive the truth or reject the truth. God says you have an opportunity to be part of his church. God's true church is not a place where people are scattered. Hear me tonight. God's true church is not a place where people are divided or live in confusion. And God's true church is not a place where we build our own tower. But in God's church, there's unity. Unity of the spirit and harmony of purpose. Now I beseech you, brethren, 
1 Corinthians 1.10, he says, Brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and same judgment. It takes God to build his church. Without God, there is no church. Without God, there is no salvation. My friend, I want to tell you tonight, Jesus, he gave his life to save the wretched poorest of sinner. He gave himself for you and I. Why? To put us in the church. I want to ask you tonight, have you seen the church? I'm not asking you, have you seen the building? No, my friend, have you seen the church that Jesus builds? She's pure, she's holy, she's part of what God is building and not man. Have you seen what Christ builds above what man seeks to build? Or are we trying to build our own tower to God? That's a question we've got to answer. Lastly, how is God's church built? How is God's church built? You go to a seminar, I've been there. I come away feeling a little bit more depressed than when I went. Because <laughs> if they say you do this, 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 you automatically have a church that's busting at the seams and it just doesn't seem to work that way. Well, first and foremost, this I do know as I study the scripture, I see, number one, God's church is divinely ruled. What do you mean by that? Christ is the head of the church. He's the head of the body. Colossians 1.18. The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Listen, my friend, The headquarters is not Anderson. The headquarters, my friend, is not some uh, uh, man-made denomination. Our headquarters is heaven. That's where we get our orders. And I believe that God's people, my friend, they'll be under the rulership of God and God alone. Divinely ruled. God's church is second of all divinely entered. You don't get in by shaking the hand of the pastor. You don't go get in by signing a a card. You don't even get in by being baptized. You've got to come in through the door. I'm still working on that sermon about the door. What do you you mean? Well, if you don't like it, there's the door. What door are you talking about? Christ is the door. Take it up with him. Jesus said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. For too long, the church of God has tried to add this or add that to salvation. Listen, Christ did enough on the cross to save you for time and eternity. And if what he did ain't good enough, my brother, none of us could be saved. His blood can make the vilest clean. His power can make you what you ought to be. What he did on Calvary, he did it all, my friend. He finished the work. All you gotta do is receive what he offers to you. You come to Christ and he'll save you. You come to him, he'll put your name in the book of life. Listen, all excuses aside, my friend, Christ and Christ alone wants to save you. And make you whole. Christ is the only one. He's the only entrance. The God's church is divinely built. Christ is the only foundation of the church. 1 Corinthians 3.11 For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Some say, well, tell me about the history of the church. And some will take you back. Well, they'll go back to the pioneers of the Reformation movement. D.S. Warner and F.G. Smith and all these guys and our hymnal filled with songs of Barney Warren and C.W. Naylor and all of these. They love God. But I've got to tell you tonight, the church, God's church goes farther back than a thousand years. 
It goes further back than a hundred years or two hundred years. It goes all the way back to Calvary where Jesus, my friend, said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God's church is divinely protected. He said she's secure from all the attacks of Satan. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's a shame today that we've got to put in security cameras. It's a shame that we've got to have people out in the lobby that are guarding. It's a shame, but I want to tell you, that's the day we live in. But I've got good news for you. If we're built upon the firm foundation, God will protect us. God's church is not only divinely built, divinely protected, divinely entered, divinely ruled. She is divinely organized. Now I realize this might make some of you mad, but I might as well just go ahead and turn up the heat tonight. Listen, the last time I checked, you don't own the church, God does. You don't tell people where they can serve, God does. You don't put people in position, God does. God sets the members in the church. You don't like it, you're part of spiritual Babylon. God set the members, every one of them, in the body. You read it. As it hath pleased who? Him. Doesn't say please the church board. Doesn't say please the pastor. It doesn't say please the Ohio ministries. Or it doesn't say please Anderson. It says pleasing God. We have gone away from the truth of God's word. Well, finally, God's church Divinely organized, protected, built, ruled, entered. She is divinely kept. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. There's no place in God's church for division. A schism is a separate part. There's no place for Babel stones in God's church. There's no place for Babel's bricks in God's church. There's no place for Babel's mortar or even the slime they use to make the mortar. Who are you talking about? I'm not talking about somebody. I didn't call nobody a slime. You might think I am after I get done with this. But I can tell you tonight, my friend, God's church is divinely kept. Where the members have same care for one another. There, Notice that. If we don't do that, we can't say we're part of God's church. I believe it was C.W. Naylor that simply penned the words to the old hymn, O oh, church of God, I love thy courts. Thou mother of the free, thou blessed home of all the saved, I dwell content in thee. You say, what are you saying? What well, goes on? He says, the church of God, one body is, one spirit dwells within, and all her members are redeemed and triumph over sin. O oh, church of God, divinely built, divinely ruled, to God she does submit, his will, her love, his truth, her guide, her path is glory lit. God sets her members, each one in place according to his will. Apostles, prophets, teachers, all his purpose to fulfill. Salvation is her holy walls, the cross her sign of power. Her captain is the mighty God who guards her every hour. I tell you tonight, I thank God for the church. Some of you get offended when he's, I say, well, the church of God is God's church. Well, it is. It is. You're either part of the church of God or you're part of the church of Babylon. Well, church of God, I love thy courts. You're the mother of the free. God has set me free because in whom the Son sets free 
is free indeed. And God can set you free tonight. I'm going to ask you tonight, as we stand together, prepare a song of invitation. What do you want God to build? And what do you want to be a part of tonight? I don't know about you, but I, I simply want to be right in the center of what God wants to do. And will you join me tonight in prayer? Just step out and come down and let's pray. Oh God, open the heavens and pour upon us a river of revival where men and women can come and find refuge in the heart of God, be forgiven, be cleansed. You can be free tonight if you will come to Christ. And He wants to deliver each and every man, woman, boy or girl out of spiritual Babylon. You can be free tonight. Come tonight, would you? Come and bow before him and say, Lord, I just consecrate my life to you. I surrender all to you, Jesus. Would you do that tonight? Come on, just come and join me in prayer. Don't, don't hold back tonight. Come on. Father, we thank you for, Lord, the message. And thank you, Father, for, Lord, it's not just a sermon. But, God, it's an experience. Thank you, Lord, for delivering me, my family, out of religion, out of organized bondage, out of man rule. Oh God, tonight I pray that every child of God would hear the call come out of her, my people, and be not part of her sin. Don't even partake of it. Come on. You say, well, I was raised a Baptist, or I was raised a Catholic, or I was raised a Pentecostal. Friend, it don't matter how you're raised. What matters tonight is your relationship with Jesus Christ. You come to Him. He is enough. He's all we need. And if you don't, my friend, you'll die lost. And just like a devil you'll end up in the very pit of hell for rejecting Christ, the only Savior. Come to Him tonight. Bless these, Father. And someone that might be watching tonight, we don't know. We don't know who's tuned in tonight. We don't know who needs encouragement. We don't know. But God, You do. And I pray, Father, may the Holy Spirit ring clear and sound the truth in every heart. May we be part of the glorious church that Jesus builds. In Christ's name we pray. Careless soul, why will you be wandering from the fold?
Amen. What a message. The church of God. Free from Babylon, all her ways, all her man rules, all false religion. She's free. I'm glad to be in the church of God tonight, aren't you? She has no other name. What a message. I'll stand with that all the way. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. As we gather tonight, it's Wednesday night. Let's gather together in a circle of prayer. Let's thank the Lord for all that He's done.